There is an opinion that philosophy confuses the mind more than it helps clear it. Well, in a way, that is true. But let's try to investigate and explain why <clears throat> this might be the case. In general, the way people function is that they have opinions about things, about different issues, they have beliefs, and they try to hang on to these opinions and beliefs. And uh, they are ready to defend them, to protect them against any uh, criticism when, when these opinions are clear, which is not always the case. Now, what does philosophy does? Well, in general, it does two primary things. First of all, it asks to clarify this belief or opinion. And second, it asks to problematize them. Well, already to clarify tends to create confusion. Why is this the case? Well, Augustine tells us that, and this was many years ago, uh, that we speak, for example, about time. We use time a lot. I have time, I don't have time, it is time. But when we ask people to clarify what is time, well, that's when the confusion starts because it's very hard to define time. So we just have some intuitive uh, understanding of knowledge about time, but we cannot really explain it. So when we try to explain it, to define it, we find that it's difficult and we start feeling confused because often we don't have such a practice of defining uh, our own ideas defining the concept we use. So the simple fact of clarifying implies a problem. And that's why, for example, in philosophical practice, when we ask questions to people, when we ask them to define their ideas, to clarify their ideas, they start feeling confused. And they say, well, I was fine until you spoke to me. Things seem to be clear. And now, indeed, I feel confused. That's the first reason. Then one of the basic uh, competency or function of philosophy is to problematize. Now, what does this mean? This means that uh, we could think differently. Uh, whatever thought we have about existence, about relations, about love, about our functioning in the world can be problematized. It means what? It means, first of all, that there are limits to these ideas after which they do not function. For example, somebody says, I love my husband very much, I love him forever. But they say, how about if he starts uh, uh, drinking, beating you up, uh, raping uh, little children, would you still love him? And they say, well, it's not possible, it will not happen, whatever. Well, it doesn't happen until the day it happens, which is often what we have surprises about people that we know and people that we, that we love. But the idea to problematize is to examine all possibility, uh, uh, to, to make the unthinkable thinkable, uh, that things we would never think of, although they do happen in life and we're very surprised, in the philosophical experience, as a thought experiment, we try to examine how these ideas would be possible. So we problematize. And of course, once we start doing that, well, our certitudes uh, start vanishing, escaping, and then we feel very confused, we feel uncertain. And there's one characteristic of the human mind, it wants to be certain, it wants to be sure, in order to feel better, in order to feel more comfortable. And that's why very often when we have, when we have beliefs, uh, when we have uh, uh, opinions, we prefer not to problematize them. We prefer to stick to them. But it means that we're not really thinking them through. We're not examining the limits of those ideas. We're not examining their flaws. Uh, and that's what the philosophical practice is asking us to do. So that's the second reason why uh, when we philosophize, we start being confused. Uh, because the clarity we had, or we thought we had, was actually based on a very uh, superficial uh, knowledge, 
uh, of the of, of our own thoughts. Uh, often it's what is called pre-reflexive consciousness. It's not really thought through. We just have feelings more than thoughts about what is happening in our mind. But as Spinoza said, feelings are unclear ideas. We did not deepen them. We did not examine what they are, their limits, uh, their functioning, and the, the flaws in their functioning. So then we have a choice. Uh, either we want to maintain this apparent clarity, or we want to go deeper. Once we start doing this work on our own thoughts and opinions, then there can be a certain form of clarity, a new acquired clarity that can take place because we have a more conscious knowledge and understanding of our own ideas. Uh, so in other words, we have to go through uh, two steps. The first step is indeed to accept that there is confusion because our clarity and our knowledge of our thoughts is very limited then we accept to destabilize them, to deconstruct them, to examine them in a deeper fashion, and then maybe we can arrive to some more clear and distinct ideas uh, about uh, our life, about the world, about whatever. But at that moment, there will be a big difference that we are conscious of the fragility of these thoughts and ideas. And in a way, we are more clear when we stop being so certain about all our thoughts. So we will acquire a certain clarity, but with this clarity will come the acceptance of the conditionality and the limits of our own thoughts.